another edition of Warbird Wednesday. My name is Fred Bell. I am the vice chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum. And today we have now Kevin officially, people are going to go, who is Kevin? Kevin is my videographer and Greg is our editor. Uh, we have moved past the World War II flying boats and the super heavies. And we're going to kind of tail this thing out with a few more and pardon the pun, tail, get it? And then people are going to go, you're not funny. I know that. I'm, I'm just having a little bit of amusement. Um, but we're going to work through this, and then we're going to get on to, and I'll telegraph it, attack helicopters. That's our next one. So we're going to go through a whole bunch of attack helicopters. But right now, we're going to finish up on flying boats. But first, my thermaturg assistant, I, I think I butchered that one. I am going to take off this Oompa Loompa. Really? Uh, I, it feels like an Oompa Loompa. It might be something else. You know, people ask us what we do with the hats. Just so you know, they don't go to waste. The kids that come in on the education programs, we actually give, we have a little contest and they get the hat. So the kids get the hat, everything gets recycled, everyone's happy. I'm not because I have to wear those things, but that was the deal during COVID and we're sticking to it. So we are today talking about the Albatross, which the first flight was in 1947. I'll throw up a plan view there. It, uh, it was introduced in 1949. It was retired in military service in 95, but it lives on. I mean, I've been in some beautiful ones that have been repurposed. It's a gorgeous airplane. And it was produced, it was actually manufactured by, from 1949 to uh, 1961. Can you believe that? And at a really high build rate at 466. Now, this is one of those designs that is almost like a zombie airplane. It is going, I think, to live on. We'll talk a little bit about that. But um, it is a gorgeous airplane. Now, you know the best one of them, I think, Kevin? is the Expendables, and I think it's an Albatross, where Sylvester Stallone or, or somebody has the guns in the front, and they go, that is, if you could have that, that would be a cool airplane. Now, movie magic, you could not, I don't think, sit up there reasonably and strafe someone in the nose of it, but it would be kind of interesting. It was an improvement out of the Mallard design. It was designed to land in the open ocean, and it was primarily designed as a search and rescue. Now, with the advent of heavy lift cargo aircraft, which we've covered in other segments, uh, this aircraft, uh, they, they had gone away from what we saw with the super heavies, where we're gonna move cargo and we're gonna do stuff like that. And we're, now we're really targeted on very specific uh, uses for amphibious aircraft or seaborne aircraft. And this one was a search and rescue. Uh, it could land in four foot seas reasonably, uh, and it has a very deep V-hole design, which Greg can maybe throw up some of them taking off. And, and so four feet would work. Now, if you wanted to take off in uh, eight to 10 foot seas, and then this would have been Mr. Toad's wild ride, you would use a uh, rocket assisted JATO takeoff to get out. That would have been one heck of a wild ride. Uh, or it's actually eight to ten feet, eight to ten foot seas or greater. Uh, it was used primarily by the United States Air Force in a search and rescue role, which it was called the SA-16. Uh, it saw heavy, heavy combat use and search and rescue in um, Korea, very heavy use in Korea. Because remember, the, the not only of battle damage, which uh, either piston engine or the jets at that time, that water is really cold. If you ended up in that water, you didn't have a lot of time. They were starting to use some um, very small helicopters. You remember that? I don't remember which one it is. I have to look it up, but the Mickey Rooney flying the helicopter. 
uh, bridge of Toko Ri or something like that, and you know you get one guy in there, you could land this thing and do much better than that. But uh, helicopters were just starting to come into use at that time, so these things were extremely important. Um, it was later re redesignated as the HU-16B, which had a longer wing, and it was used uh, primarily th at that time in Vietnam. It saw combat in Vietnam. It also, also did a lot of covert missions where they would insert people or they would rescue people because at that time we were doing a lot of clandestine things in Vietnam. I'm sure we were doing it in Korea as well. But, uh, and you also had some of those jets that were on like the MISTI missions where they were out uh, trying to provoke the um, anti-aircraft, anti-aircraft missiles of the, um, of the North Vietnamese. And those missions were incredibly dangerous. A lot of those folks end up getting shot down. And those are not the pilots that you want to fall in enemy hands. I talked to one Air Force pilot about that, and he told me, and he had done some fairly um, covert stuff, and he said what they told him is if you went into the interrogation and you saw a Russian or a Chinese a general, general officer, or, or you know, somebody higher up, the, that was that you're dead. You're not going back. You're going somewhere, they're gonna interrogate you and they're gonna get rid of you. And that leads me to my, my drink today. Now, what Kevin is telling me is this is a new batch, a new batch of love, just nothing but love from the staff. If you remember that one last week, that is the first time I almost spit the drink out on the tape. It was that bad. I, we don't use tape anymore. What is this, a hard drive or whatever? But I'm dating myself. But today we have the Blenheim. It's a ginger ale, ginger ale from pure water. No, uh, let's see, what do we got? 170 calories. It's right in there. Uh, I don't see any, uh, no, what is it, the pure cane sugar mafia stuff on this. It does have cash refund. That that always gives me that I'm not going a trip to the emergency room because that's, that's fairly new. Um, so what I want to celebrate today is we've been talking about all the search and rescue stuff in this aircraft, very specialized in that role. I want to talk about those people. Think about how dangerous that is, going out in open ocean, landing. You've got a crew that's down, and it happened. Let's not forget all those people in, in World War II with Catalinas and all that that went out and got people, but specifically kind of this Korea, Vietnam, uh, Cold War. There was a lot of weird stuff going on back then, both with black ops and stuff like that. And in many cases, and there are some of these crews which I've read, they didn't come back. You know, the Russians got them, the Chinese got them. And basically, you're you were killed in a training accident or weather or whatever because the government would never acknowledge a black operation. So uh, it is a really, really tough job and uh, doing it in a fixed wing aircraft, rotary wing, uh, and these Coast Guard folks and these guys that fly into this really bad weather, even now with all the technology, people were doing it back then, didn't have the stuff that these guys have now and so I want to salute all those folks that are involved in search and rescue, especially during the Cold War. Very tough. I got a little bit of a fizz out of that, and it is showing fizz. That's a good thing. All right, Kevin. Classic ginger ale. Decent finish. Um... Greg's going to be upset. It's not, you know, where I'm going to hurl. This one, again, not quite my taste. It, it, it has definitely gotten, like, hot, and then it was cold and then been reheated or re-chilled. Or re but uh, it's got actually a little bit of a bite to it. Mm. Well, I made it through, Kevin, so, you know, I don't know, shucks. So the, the Navy used this aircraft 
as the uh, the HU-16 CD version again in SAR. The Coast Guard used it from a lot of their fixed bases. Eventually, as I said, their rotary wing assets, a lot of their helicopters and their long range search and rescue aircraft and their C-130s supplanted uh, this airplane and, and sent it to retirement. The final flight was of a Air Force aircraft was in 1973. It also set an altitude record um, either the day before, a couple days before, or on that flight. So uh, it was, uh, it was a, a fruitful mission into retirement. The Navy flight was in 1976. It went to the Navy Museum. And the aircraft passed out of military service with the Royal Hellenic Navy in uh, 1995 as we talked about. But that's not the end of the line, Kevin. These aircraft have been proposed to be built again in Australia. And that's a terrible Australian accent. I know it is. I apologize to you down there. You're much more intriguing accent than that. And, uh, and by the way, our opener is that's an Australian group. We love those guys, those ska guys. Um, but they're in uh, 2021, they're talking about uh, building, it was proposed to build these in Australia. They're supposed to start production in 2025. And the designation will be the G-11T. Now that may change. So don't hold me to that, but we are, this one is going to continue to go, which I think is, uh, let's see if it actually happens. But uh, I'm kind of excited about that now. If you are out and about and this weather, did you know I've given up on Puxatani Phil and I'm just using Pete the Crab who continues to look confused. So I've kind of given up on the weather, but that does not mean that you should be prepared, that you need to be prepared. As in search and rescue, you need this hoodie. This hoodie will keep you warm. It'll cover your head, It'll keep the rain off of you. Right now, we are getting the most bizarre weather out in California, so uh, you need one of these. So, And it has the coolest aircraft on it. It's got the Palm Springs logo on the front, and it's got the Mustang on the back. What more could you ask for than a hoodie like this? And if you click on that link, Jason will happily draw the thing on the back. He won't, but he'll mail it to you. And you can be the first kid on your block to amaze your friends with your P-51D shirt from the Palm Springs Air Museum. Now, remember, if you came across us on YouTube, we need your subscription. So the channel is growing by leaps and bounds. It just shows that people do like one-take air, military airplane videos. We do this in one take. If you know somebody that doesn't want all the pomp and circumstance, we try to wow you with a few graphics there. That is Greg, our, our editor. Uh, we would surely appreciate a subscription. Send us to people that you think are like-minded individuals and leave us a comment. And you can leave me a good comment or you can leave me a bad comment. I get both. Uh, if you have come across us on Facebook, same thing. Love to have a like, watch it, send it to your friends. And we really appreciate it. And again, leave us a comment. We cannot do this. I say this every video without uh, a few shekels. So if we don't do the whole Patreon thing and exclusive content. But if you like the video, go out, throw us a few bucks once in a while when you decided that you're you know, not going to spend it on something else and send it our way. We would greatly appreciate it. My name is Fred Bell. I am the Vice Chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Three, two, one. End of death. King with a go.
Watch him down the path.